In this video, we're going to be checking out this USB condenser microphone from Comica. It's called the STA-U1. Comica did send this mic to me for purposes of making a video, but they don't get any input into the video that I make. I agreed to take a look at this microphone, uh, not because I thought it was going to be anything spectacular, but just because I thought it was a unique looking microphone. You'll be listening to the microphone throughout this video. Obviously, I'm using it to record the audio and you can just evaluate how you think it sounds. At the end, I guess I'll maybe give you just kind of my two cents on how I think it sounds and how it maybe compares to some different options out there. I will not be doing any post-processing during this video. The only thing I'll do is just raise the levels a little bit so that they're more palatable to YouTube, but no post-processing, no EQ, no compression, nothing like that. Check the chapter markers if you want to jump around to particular parts of this video. I'm not going to get into any really crazy in-depth testing, but I am going to compare it against just about every other microphone that I own. So that will be pretty epic, so stay tuned for that. As I said before, this is a USB microphone, so this connects right into your device. I'm running mine into my MacBook Pro here. According to Comica, I mean, you can plug this into smartphones and tablets. If you want to plug it into an iPhone or something, you are going to need to get a USB-C to lightning adapter. In the box, it comes with this long... USB-C to USB-C cable, but it also has a little built-in adapter that will take it to a Type-C. It does come with a pretty nice yoke, which allows you to rotate the microphone like all the way around inside. On the bottom of the yoke is a 3 8 inch thread, and we're going to get to like pros and cons and stuff, but <laughs> right off the bat, it's pretty standard for microphones to have a 5 8 inch thread and usually an adapter to take it down to 3 8 But this is only a 3 8 inch thread. The reason that's a problem, the stand that it comes with is just this little base here. And then that's obviously gonna screw right into the bottom of the microphone. And that's gonna sit on your desk and the microphone's gonna be like way down here, which isn't ideal unless you want to lean down into the microphone or you wanna prop it up on a, on a bunch of books or, or some other stackable thing. Like it's never good to have your microphone too far away from your mouth. It's just not a great stand. And the fact that it only has a 3 8 inch thread means you're going to be limited to uh, what kind of stands or boom arms you can use. Now, most boom arms do have a 3 8 inch thread built in. A lot of the stands will have a 5 8 inch thread. That would be my major criticism of this in terms of its like physical design. Anyway, just to get that out of the way, that's really all it comes with. There's some manual and some other like there's stickers and stuff in there. But I'm only showing you this microphone for this use case for spoken words. So that's, you know, recording videos like this, talking to camera. You could use this for podcasting, those kinds of things or voiceovers. But obviously, if you want to record instruments and things like that, you can do that with this microphone. But I'm not going to get into like all the specifications about how loud it can get and how loud of a source it can handle. The price point of this, I think, is around 60, 65, 70 dollars. It has really nice features, I guess, built into the microphone. So you have this really big gain knob on the front. There is an RGB uh, light indicator. It has like a live metering function. It's like blue if you're kind of quiet and then green would be sort of the safe zone and then orange and means you're getting loud and then red means you're peaking. And you can see all that indicated kind of as you're speaking into the microphone or as you're recording any audio source into it. And then on the back of the microphone, obviously you have the USB-C connector and it's really sturdy it's hard to actually pull it out so that's nice and then on next to that you can see i have my headphones plugged directly in so you can monitor uh, live so zero latency monitoring you can use this as an audio source so if you're watching a video or something on your computer you can listen to it through here it'll show up as an audio source in your computer and then the gain knob will then be the headphone knob for that so you can adjust the volume it also has I was initially kind of put off by the build quality. It seems really cheap. I think only because it's really light. Sometimes I guess like heaviness maybe gives a false appearance or false sense of something being higher quality. This is made of metal, but it feels like it's plastic just because it's so thin and light. I guess take that for what it's worth. It's really not worth much. There's supposedly a built-in pop screen or pop filter in here to help with plosives. As I've been listening to it, it seems pretty reasonable. If you're pretty careful with how you address microphones, you probably won't have uh, too big an issue with plosives. But if you're not careful and you get close and you talk right into the front, Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. You're obviously going to get some plosives, but pretty much any mic will do that. So let me go ahead and take it off of this boom arm and put it on the desk stand and we'll just compare how it might sound in that case. Check, check. Check, check. One, two. So yeah, it's uh, you're probably going to hear quite a bit different uh, sound quality here. Let me 
see how loud we're getting. I need to turn it up. So if you're new to recording audio, just a quick tip. The closer that you can get the microphone to the source of the audio, in this case would be my voice, the better that it's going to sound. So now you don't necessarily want to get it right up on your mouth. That's why the bass is not good. Um, it'll work in a pinch, obviously. And if you did not, if you didn't have a boom arm or any other stand that you could uh, put this on, then I would definitely recommend getting uh, some books or something so that you could get this up much higher and then therefore closer to you. So here we are on the Comica STA-U1. We're gonna be doing a major mic roundup, a gigantic roundup of all the microphones that I have. Maybe not all, but most. So buckle in for that. <laughs> Check the chapter markers if you wanna skip around to particular microphones. This is the Shure MV7X. This is the XLR version of the MV7X and not the XLR and USB version of the MV7. This is what it sounds like. No mic booster, no cloud lifter, nothing like that. Straight into the Orchestra Pro and no audio processing. Now that you've been listening to the MV7, I am back on the Comica so you can get a direct comparison between this and the MV7. Now let's get on to the next mic. This is the Shure SM7B. This is a $400 broadcast dynamic microphone. This is what it sounds like in comparison to the Comica STA-U1. This has some switches to change the frequency response of the microphone, but they are not activated. It's just in its flat response mode. This is what the Comica sounds like in comparison to the SM7B. So let's get on to the next one. Now we're on the PreSonus PD70, another broadcast dynamic mic. Once again, running into the Rodecaster, no mic boosting, no mic activating, no cloud lifting. This is what it sounds like in comparison to the Comica STA-U1. How did you like the PreSonus PD70 in comparison to the Comica? Now that you have that comparison in your brain, let's move on to the Rode PodMic. This is a $100-ish broadcast dynamic microphone, and this is what this sounds like in comparison to the Comica STA-U1. Once again, Rode Pod mic, broadcast dynamic microphone, XLR only. This is what it sounds like. What about the Rode Pod mic in comparison to the Comica? What'd you think? So now let's move on to the next one. Now we're on the TZ Audio Product Stellar X2. This is an XLR condenser microphone, large diaphragm condenser microphone. I don't know what this goes for, but this is what this sounds like in comparison to the Comica. Let's go ahead and move to the next mic. This is the Maono AUPM500. This is another XLR only large diaphragm condenser microphone. This is what it sounds like in comparison to the Comica STA-U1. Again, this is the Maono AUPM500 large diaphragm condenser microphone. That was the Moano AUPM500 that Mike finally released. So if you like that microphone, you can now actually buy it. Now this is the AKG C214. This is another large diaphragm XLR condenser microphone. And this is what it sounds like in comparison to the Comica. That was the AKG C214, a relatively budget-friendly microphone in the AKG family of mics. It'll set you back a lot more than the Comica, though. Let's move on to the next mic. Now we're recording on the Seven Rhymes SRAU01. I think I got that right. I would classify this as a direct competitor to the Comica, so pay attention to this one in particular. This is how the Seven Rhymes sounds in comparison to the Comica STAU01 dash. Why the fuck can't they name these microphones better? That was the Seven Rhymes something or other. The very comparable mic to the Comica, both very budget friendly USB condenser microphones. All right, last microphone, I believe. This is the Fine Fine K something. <laughs> All the microphones will be linked in the description if you want to check any of them out. Sorry, they don't, I don't know why they just don't name these things, something that you can actually remember. This is a dynamic USB microphone, so similar to the MV7, but not my MV7X. After my initial kind of um, uh, lack of uh, enthusiasm over the build quality, I feel like it's kind of grown on me. I don't think it's as bad as I thought it was. It just felt really light and therefore kind of plasticky. My biggest complaint about it is just the stand. It's not out of the normal. Um, I know that Rode makes a similar microphone to this that has a little wimpy stand like this as well. You're much better suited putting it on some sort of boom arm or other mic stand. As noted, it's unfortunate that there's no 5 8 inch thread for this microphone. I'm sure there's probably an adapter that you could buy relatively cheaply if you did have a tabletop mic stand that you, you know, that you already own. 
As for the sound quality, I'm actually pretty impressed with this. I think it sounds better <laughs> than I anticipated. Very clear, very articulate, very detailed sound. It doesn't like seem to boost anything. Uh, it seems to be pretty neutral. So that's it for this review, overview, whatever you want to call it, of the Comica STAU-01. So check out the playlist that's floating around on the screen right now if you want to see more microphone reviews. If you're not convinced about the Comica, I've done lots and lots of reviews, including just about all the microphones that you saw in this roundup.